Good morning, YouTube people. And sunny, sunny, cold morning. So I'm gonna go over a little bit of how I use the fixie clamp today. This tool is used for a lot of things, but specifically very great for cleaning underneath windowsills and frames and just anything that gets dirty. So let's get started today. gonna clean these up before that dries off for sure or else it leaves this streaky mess up here on the frame that all off quickly clean under here oh yeah that's coming right off quick there's really not much drip on this one which is good See, there's some drip mess right here, but that was because we had a lot of rain and the dirt up here fell down here. So, it's about the best I can do on that one. see I missed all this up here so let me get this off first we'll touch that up There's still some water spots from either construction or just the rain that hits the side of the building and just dries on there. But again, you want to clean up the mess you make and any dirt or cobwebs that you see, you want to clean those off. I'm on the sunny side of this building and no matter what time of year, it's just hot. This building is a black and being the fact that it is a dark black color, it will evaporate so much quicker. So let's move this quickly, get in the corners. I 
more water to the mop head here just because we're on the sunny side. So we want to combat the evaporation. I might only be able to do one panel at a time. See how fast I can move here. Bye. corners before they dry so let's get up here nice and quickly the sun really hates me even in the winter time it will burn damn it use the two-handed effect or the two-handed technique for uh, sunny days um, which I do use on occasion but I find this method is just as quick um, for me anyway some of you may disagree and I'm sure you will an angle when I go lower like that I mean I could stop and like change the angle but what's the point if you could just grab an extra squeegee that you have and finish and finish closing up the bottom here this uh this one was actually normally white in the sun heavily in the sun but today the tree gods have blessed me with some shade all right Towel starting to get too wet. Right. Yeah, probably shouldn't be using this towel to clean the bottom, but that's 
it's okay. I started out as a dirty towel anyway today. Okay. Moving around to the other side. Back in the shade. So shady. Such a shady lady. Alrighty. Definitely don't have to use as much water on these panels since these are pretty much almost always in the, in the shade, even in the afternoon. Oh, there. A little more height. Actually, let me show you. This is the full extension. I don't really need this much extension. Luckily, I can walk out into the highway or the road over here. I don't know if you can see in my shadow. See, that's the full extension. And these panels, I can do all these panels at the same time. Still want to move with purpose here, but not as much urgency is needed compared to the side with the sun, because that side is a mother trucker. All right. So you can see from there to the ground, that's full extension right there. because I don't need that much extension. <laughs> I just wanted to see how uh, how um, rigid it is fully extended, which it's pretty rigid, but also flexible. So this has become my favorite pole. Though unfortunately, I mean, it's, it's a little cumbersome for some jobs, so I'll go back to using my uh, four foot pole because not all my jobs require such a big pole. It does have a longer handle at the bottom compared to say like the cone unger pole. But again, it's been my favorite pole. Super easy to adjust. Um, and uh, and it's, it's a pole you can use completely fully extended and not lose any rigidity. And it's not heavy. <laughs> I know I'm doing like another review basically on this pole, but this is kind of more of it in action versus um, the previous video I did. Oh, caught a corner there. Gotta put more weight on it. this to a drier side. And I'm using the corner of the fixie clamp to pull off any water under the small frame. And then I'm coming back around clean the panel itself. A lot of dirt gets caught up right here. So you could do it one of two ways. You could do like a box like this so you can get the bottom and then fill in the middle here. Or you can um, do side to side. Oh, this is not working that well. Do side to side. The sun's in my eye, I can't really see. And then clean up the bottom. Drip. But honestly, this method seems to be the better, more um, coverage uh, method than the others. I also want to clean these panels up here. Come back down here. Pop off any pop off any uh, 
cobwebs. Bring it up. Ah, the sun's in my eye. There we go. See, I left a drip up there. Ow. There we go. No more sun. God, that was like right in my eye. Even though I'm wearing sunglasses. Okay. And that's all those panels done. I'm actually going to retire the fixie clamp for now. Um, no, no, that's a bad spot. I'm going to leave it on the frame here because if it touches the ground, that microfiber is going to pick up all this uh, crap on the ground here. There we go. So switch over to my scrubby. This guy back. When you're working on uh, fast food, you want to try to get the you want to try to get this done first. So you never know if a car is going to pop up. I'm here pretty early, but sometimes I get here a little too late. And this is going to need a little little extra loving. This is my um, magic eraser tool. Sometimes you can't get under here, like there's this gap here. You can get your finger in here. So I like to use these um, magic erasers and just kind of get in there because there's fingerprints in there, believe it or not. There we go. And including up here too. Like these tend to be really hard to get into, especially with a scrubber. And then you want to kind of bend the squeegee like, I don't know how to describe it, pretty, pretty angle, almost zero degree angle to get under here. And then under here, you can see it kind of do the same thing. It's difficult sometimes. You can also just sort of do a pull it like that from the top and then try to get it so I can get it on camera. It doesn't always pop up. This can be a little difficult. There we go. 
And then um, I put a uh, towel down here to clean up because you're going to end up leaving water. You're going to end up leaving water down there, so clean up that. There. Sometimes, though, you do get these little corners that are a little difficult to keep clean. This can be pretty difficult sometimes. So the other use for the fixie clamp would be to use kind of like the dirty side. I still use this and to kind of clean up like if you leave any large amounts of water on the ground, just kind of use it as an actual mop. You don't want to leave your mess behind. So there you go. Can, and you want to make sure the edges are covered because then you don't want to, like I said, you don't want to scratch with the fixie clamp. And you just go over it. And I'm using a really thick microfiber towel. It picks up a lot of water. It's correctly. If you put too much soap on there, it gets trapped in between all of these uh, holes here. That's how you do it. All right, so that's um, just some of the uses for the for the fixie clamp. Super handy tool. Um, I carry two of them just because they are just that handy. <laughs> 